If you have noticed, Blender has gone under multiple updates in the last year, and now a new beta version, Blender 4.2, has been released with multiple features that can enhance your workflow even further. And what we have seen so far in the latest release, I mean of the beta version, includes changes to the user interface, optimization in performance when modeling, and major improvements concerning the EV engine, and more stuff that we can cover in this video. And we're gonna start with the user interface. In general, it is actually hardly noticeable, but some minor changes have been applied to the overall interface, like the dialogues and status bar improvements, for a more concise and dynamic view. And you can see indeed that there is now a new display design for status bar with expanded key map icons. And the menus have also been updated and received some additional items. For example, some have been condensed, others have been removed. You can also notice that now the object menu comes with the new submenus for modifiers and constraints. And the file menu with new options to manage and use data that can also be managed from the outliner. And in the sculpt mode and exactly in the sculpt menu, you can see that the transform options have been condensed. In addition, a context menu has been added to the recent file option, allowing you to open the file location of previous projects. Moreover, a new way of rearranging modifiers has been introduced with a new ability to pin the modifier you wish to pin and put always last. Camera guides in Passport 2 can now be toggled from the viewport overlays and the focal distance is selectable with the eyedropper. Similar to focus with an object, but now you are selecting a distance. And to wrap up the user interface overview, there is finally the possibility to create your themes to your own preference and you can save them. Now with a controversial update, in the previous versions of the beta, you should have noticed that you can no longer see the add-ons tab in your preferences, and that's because it has been replaced with extensions. Yes, extensions. No more add-ons that you can install either manually from your personal repository or from the new beta platform of Blender, along with some downloadable themes that you can now install by dragging and dropping from the website straight to Blender extensions window. However, after some backlash from the Blender community, they returned the add-ons tab and they just added the Get Extensions 1, a last-minute update that happened a few days ago. This slightly calmed down the community, but the fact remains, a lot of users are not happy with the removal of the Install Add-on button. The Extensions update came with the addition of the Network Selection in the System tab for Blender to either have access to the internet or not. This is mostly for giving Blender access to the extensions repositories. In addition, in the sculpt mode, we see that new tools are available now. And these tools have been condensed and reorganized to keep the toolbar clean and visually appealing. You can consider these tools as subtools to mask, hide, trim, and face chat, and more like new forms to complete these actions. And when it comes to modeling, rotation increments can now be charged with both value and precision of increments. Moreover, some new curves operators have been added allowing for a better editing margin. And in the UV editor, new incrementations have also been added to set the snap base and along with slide features coming over. Plus, the absolute grid snap option has been replaced with snap to grid. Geometry nodes was not absent in this update and received some improvements too. Most of them are performance improvements and workflow optimizations. New elements have been added like the matrix socket and some have been removed and others rearranged. Also, the interesting update concerning the node editor is not displaying the constant and unchangeable input socket on the sidebar. And what captivated me most in this update are the great improvements to Eevee, which suffered from a lot of limitations in the last few years. The new update of Eevee is finally arriving in the 4.2 version, introducing global illumination, as this version comes with screen space ray tracing applied on every BSDF and a new tone mapper in color management available for both Blender rendering engines, which are Eevee and Cycles, for a more accurate output rendering. Displacement is also supported in displacement and bump mode along with the partial support of motion blur through camera view and a full support for shutter curve. Also viewport image is now more stable and the depth of field has also been rewritten by removing denoising amount and high quality slide defocus settings making them always on. Another big improvement in EV is the fact that there is no more light limitations that you can add. 
but there is still a limit on how many lights are rendered in a scene. And the limit is 1496 lights, which is fairly sufficient in a lot of cases. And the composition is not limited to the camera region only. However, I can't find the bloom feature anywhere in Blender 4.2, which means it probably has been removed, but we can also notice there can be awkward compatibility problems which can be solved with presets made in previous versions. But before passing on to cycles, the last thing we should point is that the AV interface is now close enough to cycles. Now, the compositor also received what I think of some sweet improvements regarding the performance of each of his composited nodes and how they work improving greatly the quality in lesser time, especially with the optimization of the CPU, which are linked to the compositor and the GPU acceleration that has been implemented for this purpose. And when it comes to cycles, we can see that the principal BSDF has no more realistic interference effects along with the new shader. The Ray Portal BSDF allowing more complicated scenes and including scenes inside scenes is also a nice addition. Now, have you ever been tired of having to export its collection and object individually and specifying every time in which format? Well, Blender now has finally brought the solution because now you can export all collections at once in multiple files and then by specifying before the format that you want for the collection and click the export options to export all collections. Obviously, there are various other updates that can be cited like the example of a new brush system and improvements with more accurate hair rendering. In addition to new animation and rigging features, and there will be probably more updates in the official release planned in the 16th of July. But overall, we have explored the major changes that are so far in Blender 4.2 the beta version. However, the Grease Pencil tool doesn't seem to be having or receiving any updates in this version. So maybe more updates will be in Blender 4.3, who knows. So I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.